Yes. It's intermission time. We're going to take a short intermission. There's going to be some cartoons, some music, some fun. When we come back, it is time for our seventh annual discussion of one of the worst Christmas movies of all time, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. So we will be right back with more of the Pope on film. You should have had ice cream to eat, Bunny. I yeah. could have dressed like Santa, and you would have been the ice cream bunny. Oh, uh... missed opportunity. Next time, you just have to have like a big trough. Stick around. We'll be right back with more. So stick around. Don't move. Just sit. Just, just sit down and wait for the show to be back. I swear to God, if you if we come back for the show and you're not sitting there waiting, I swear to God, I will break you in half. I will break you in half. Don't you test me. Sit there and wait. Go! Much, much later. Hey, Grandpa, tell me about the time you committed treason. Well, our president was a racist and a rapist, and he lost re-election. So we decided to break into the Capitol and try and hang the vice president and kill a bunch of people. And I, I saw somebody take a big shit in, in a hallway. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty great time, and and that's my story. That's not a very good story, Grandpa. Well, fuck you, you piece of shit. Between work and school, I'm a very busy person. I don't have time to meet that special someone. So I went to loverstate.com, paid the $700 fee, and filled out the questionnaire, which they obviously ignored. Hello? Hey, baby. My name's Ted the Stead. Ted the Stead? Yeah, um, it's really Ted the Stud, but uh, that don't rhyme. <laughs> I wanted someone who was financially stable. Oh, okay. Are you ready to go? Oh, uh, hey. Are you going to pay for this? Because I spent my last five bucks on some lottery tickets and some 40 ounces. Oh, never mind. I got some Chef R.D. in the car. Be right back. I wanted somebody who was sweet. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. Amazing what you find when your neighbors don't lock the car door. <laughs> hey, you need a Bible? <laughs> I wanted a person who was family-minded. So, do you have any kids? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure somewhere. Hey, who is that there, that there picture of you? That's my sister. Cute. How about later on you, me, and her get together in the bedroom? <laughs> I wanted someone adventurous. Uh, are you expecting somebody? No. Look, uh, if it's the cops, I'm not here. You're wanted by the cops? Yeah, look, it's a little bit of a misunderstanding. <laughs> See, I, I didn't know she was 15. I, I thought she was 12. <laughs> I wanted someone to call me unexpectedly and tell me they needed me. Mm. Oh. Hello? Hey, baby. Ted, it's three o'clock in the morning. I know, baby, but I need you real bad. The cops got me. <laughs> I need bail money like now. It cost me 20 minutes of my time to fill out the questionnaire. $700 to join. One bad date. 20 calls a night for two weeks, and another $200 to file a restraining order. Thanks a lot, loversdate.com. Loversdate.com, we just promised you a date. Wow. This room, this room is perfect. The, the aura in here, man. Oh, just, mmm, so good. This is a great Great room. Yeah, I mean, this room is exactly like the one downstairs. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want with A it. shrine right there on the oh, wall. Yes, a shrine with incense. Yes, can you smell <sighs> the incense everywhere? <sighs> yes. And my Chopra poster. Oh. Chopra? Wasn't he an extra on Star Trek? And my sign. My sign right there. Oh, yes, my sign. Well, we'll have to move the TV. Yes, throw it out. We oh, don't need yes, get rid of it all together. Well, we don't. You don't need a TV downstairs if you don't want it. No, no. that TV. Yes. That TV? No. That one. Wait, wait, are you talking no. about moving in here? Well, yeah, man. No, 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 no. you guys can't move in here. <laughs> well, why not? It, uh, it's so perfect. Um, 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 I, I, I sleep in the nude. Well, me too, man. Tell me what to do, you're not my dad! 
I think I'm gonna procrastinate a little bit more. Oh, oh, oh. Hitting up and strange without my right hand. Using my left hand, singing. I need to quit singing so I can start drinking. Here I go. Dark in the city, night is a while. Steaming the subway, the world is on fire. Woman, you want me? Give me a sign. Catch my breathing even closer behind. In touch with the ground, I'm a hot down after you. I smell like a sound, I lost in a cry, and I'm hungry like a wolf. Cross the line, a discord and rhyme. I'm on a hunt down after you. My mouth is alive with juices and wine, and I'm hungry like a wolf. <laughs> Stuck in the forest, too close behind To be a funny by the moonlight side do 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 Have a drum made on your skin so tight You feel my heat, I'm just a moment behind do 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 Touch with the ground, I'm on a hunt down after you. I smell like a sign, I'm lost and I'm found, and I'm hungry like the world. A shred of the line, a discord and rhyme, howling and winding after you. My mouth is alive, I'm running inside, and I'm hungry like the world. in the ground, away from the crowd, cause I'm on a hunt down up Dario, I smell like a sound, I'm lost and I'm found, and I'm hungry like the wolf, I'm out of line, it's discord and rhyme, cause I'm on a hunt down up you. my mouth is alive, with juices and wine, I'm on a hungry like the wolf, burn in the ground. Break from the crowd, I'm on a hunt down after you. I sent it the sound, I'm lost and I'm fired, and I'm hungry like the wall. Crunch the line, a discord and rhyme. I'm on a hunt down after you. My mouth is alive, I run inside, and I'm hungry like the wall. Must a sweat doing that song. <sighs> that deserves a drink. Don't mind if I do.
Mm. Judge me by my size, do you? Mm. My penis you have not seen. Huge it is. Mm. Yes. Suck it, you will. Mm. time yes and i'm dispensing with the usual intro because this is again yet another special episode where we will be once again for the seventh year in a row watching this movie right here santa and the ice cream bunny hey this movie is uh copyright free couldn't we just like play it in the middle of us that's a that's a poster that I have never seen before. This one? That is yeah. hideous. Yeah. yeah. Looking at it right now, it is. That's a weird looking one. Uh, so every year we finish the holiday season by discussing Santa and the ice cream bunny. And every year I come up with all new notes that you have never seen before. In fact, I didn't even know why I'm mentioning it. 
it's not like I've used the exact same notes for seven years in a row saying the exact same thing every time we get to the last episode of the year. No one would ever listen to the show enough to go back to former episodes and check. So there's no point in me even saying that. Of course, this is an entirely new episode where we're saying entirely new things about Santa Claus and the ice cream bunny. And besides, you, the listener, are too lazy to check. So, well, Puffies, it's the holiday season. Time to hang up your stockings, light your menorah, and hide your painted eggs. Time to wear some green or else you'll get pinched. Isn't that so weird that there's like one sexual harassment holiday out there? You know? Where it's like, hello, this is the holiday in America where if a stranger isn't wearing the right color, I get to touch them. That's (laughs) weird. And considering that Irish people don't do that. Yeah. And then, like, in the 80s, like, you would literally get pinched by a stranger. No, I'm aware. Yeah. It was, it was, it was weird. Uh, Blast in the past. This is for Kmart and Sue. Oh my God. I was just looking up. The kitten. What the, what the heck? Okay. So, uh, the kitten again. Let me the kitten. Uh, his name is Skimble Shanks, the railway cat, and he can tap dance. Watch. Skimble Shanks. I saw a thing uh, uh, on. Jellico cats do jellico no, shit. No. I saw a video where you can tell if you have a good cat by dangling them. That's the term mm-hmm. they use dangling. dangling. You hold them under their front, front legs and let them just dangle and wave them back and forth. And if they can do that, they're going to be a good cat. Nice. My cat, it's so weird. My Honey. cat won't dangle. So, uh, Natasha just found her Sears uh, shopping rewards card. Uh, I, I don't mean to brag, but my wife can get discounts at Sears and Kmart. Ooh. So, I know. Like, I know Whoa. Oh, the weird wow. thing is, is that you were listening... Right yeah, so. you were listening in your in 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 your room while you were cleaning. You were listening to the song "Bitch" by Meredith Brooks. I was. I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. And every I'm time bitch, that I'm song comes on, I think of Sears because there's that one line in the song where she says, "See the softer side," and I always think of the commercials. Come see the softer side of Sears. So right before you came in here, all gun ho saying, I found my Sears rewards card. I looked up Sears on Wikipedia. And in 2019, they closed down all of these stores, but they left a certain amount open. And then most of them closed. They're like, we're going out of business, but the stores that are open, you can stay open. And it's like, yeah, and you'll probably stay open. I mean, unless a a major act of God shuts everything down. So most of the Sears that were still around, despite the fact that the company went out of business, most of those that were still in business closed down because of the pandemic. But there's one an hour and 40 minutes away in Muskogee, Oklahoma, that's still open. It's not a Sears. It's a Sears home town yeah it's, it's like a the, small mini sears it's got appliances and shit that's what we had yeah. here when the big sears came yeah. down they kept a little they, they kept they, the they little sears the inch, the inch of a small sears yeah right next to the the, the wild wild wing yeah wings one uh, yeah, yeah buffalo wild wings that's the place right next door to that yeah and they eventually uh shut down because of the pandemic yeah but isn't but, that uh, isn't that something there's still one open here in oklahoma a relic and then uh, it's so, so fortuitous again. that I'm here thinking about Sears and you come in having found your Sears rewards card. You are a VIP to me, honey. Smooch, smooch, smooch. You saw that. You all saw that. She is still right here. <laughs> and on our Christmas episode. And on our Christmas episode. Here. 
is your Sears Rewards card back. I put that right there in between the boobs. Just want to make sure that that is secure. And it is. Okay. Uh, yes, it's the holidays. Time for the annual pilgrimage to Mecca. Yes, it's time for Maxwell and I to one, once again undertake our annual rite of Hajj. Maxwell's favorite part of Hodge is the drinking from the well of Zamzam, but my favorite part is the counterclockwise running around the Kaaba. So I guess I'm just old fashioned like that. Yeah. Yes, my friends. It's, it's about tradition. For... It's about tradition. It's about the Christmas tradition of lighting a bag of your own poop on fire, ringing someone's doorbell, and running away. Yes, my friends, time to talk about the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, dressing in costumes and getting free candy from strangers. It's about eating insane amounts of turkey and fall as falling asleep in front of a football game. It's about eating candy hearts, and most importantly, it's about the birthday of America and barbecues. Yes, Christmas, the day that we celebrate the birth of Christ by becoming the angriest, greediest MFers on the face of the earth. Christmas also is about classic Christmas movies. You know, there's so many classic, classic Christmas movies that have come out over the years. Kiss Kiss, Bang Bang, Iron Man 3, Gremlins, Die Hard, and this week's film, which saves you time and money by being two, two, two crappy movies in one. It's the notoriously hideous cinematic stillborn known as Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. No, no, hold on, hold on. Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny! Yeah. This week's movie, this week's movie is so bad that a lot of people, including some bad movie lovers out there, have never even heard of this movie, let alone seen it. It's a real under-the-radar type of a movie. Now, the difficult part of this uh, discussion of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, which, again, we have never had before. This is a wholly new bit of notes that no one has ever heard before. Um, <laughs> uh, it's difficult to explain this week's movie without sounding completely insane. You know? Okay. okay. But the basic plot focuses on Santa Claus, who it should be noted, rates a 9.5 on the Joe Don Baker sweat meter. <laughs> that is a joke that I have never said before. Yes. Ever. And if I had, it's not like you would go back and it, it, you, the listener or viewer, would go back and watch all the other times that we've done this. Uh, so uh, why am I even mentioning it? So uh, uh, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. We've discussed this film in the past in episodes 105, 154, 198, 241, 285, and 429. This right here is our seventh uh, annual viewing of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, and, of course, I take different notes each time, which uh, I think really keeps things fresh, you know? Because I'm a professional. I wouldn't just pull out the same notes over and over again from a really old episode of the podcast and just do them over and over again. I wouldn't do that. Another thing that I wouldn't do is find just one page of the old notes and then freak out because I'm missing the other page and then spend an entire day listening to our last episode, episode uh, 429, and writing it all down word for word so that I can transcribing an entire episode of the podcast because that's something an insane person would do. Yes. And I am not an insane person, which is why every year when we get to the last episode of the year, I write all new notes for this movie. Even though this is the seventh year that we've done this film, every time is different. Why? Because we are professionals. Yes. I Damn know, it. Bella Lugosi, and you're all very excited, but look, we are professionals. The basic plot 
uh, is about Santa. He crashes his sled on a beach in Florida. That's Florida the state and not Flo Rida the rapper. Yes. I would hate for you to get confused. Allegations that he was drunk have not been confirmed. Yeah. Uh, uh, Flo Rida the rapper. That is a joke that makes perfect sense right here in the year of our Lord 2022 because it's a new joke that I have never said before. So uh, the reindeer leave him because it's too hot. Personally, I hope he fires the reindeer. I think that that's uh, uh, unprofessional. Yes. Insubordinate. Churlish. So uh, then uh, kids come and help him to try and get Santa out of the sand. He's stuck in the sand. A gorilla shows up, a donkey, other animals from a theme park petting zoo. We'll get to that later. A number, a bunch of people try and get Santa out of the sand. He summons kids uh, with his mind powers. Uh, X-Men to me! Like that. Like, uh, do-do-do-do-do-do-do. The Illuminati will see you now. (laughs) Uh, Then out of nowhere, a whole different movie breaks out. And, uh, it's actually a much longer movie. Yeah, this movie within a movie is actually much longer. And and all of this Santa nonsense it is just like the, what would you call it, the bumper? The wraparound. The wraparound. The wraparound. Yes. There you go. Um, actually, there's another bit to this, because in the movie within a movie, the character of Thumbelina, if you watch the Thumbelina version. There's two versions. We'll get to that later. The character of Thumbelina visits a pirate theme park in Florida post-Disney bastardization. They visit Pirate Land Amusement Park for no reason whatsoever. So really, it's a movie about Santa Claus, and then a, and then <coughs> in a movie within that movie, a girl goes to Pirate World, and while she's in Pirate World, she imagines the movie Thumbelina so it's kind of a movie within a movie within a movie. It's crapception. Yes. Uh, inception jokes. Very topical here in the year of our Lord 2022. Because I, I just wrote that joke for the first time. Yes. Just a few days ago. So. Uh, not not when the movie first came out. Not when the movie first came out. Yeah. Of course not. So Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. I keep wanting to call it Santa Claus versus the Ice Cream Bunny, but unfortunately, there's no fight. I and think that, that would have been a on. better movie, though. That would have been a better movie. Santa Claus versus the Ice Cream Bunny. Okay, that's a completely different story. This is a 1972 kids movie. And it's important to note that throughout the 60s and 70s and even the 80s, the powers that be in Hollyweird seem to literally think that, like, okay, we're going to make a movie. And it's going to be good, and we're going to have a good plot and a good... uh, Oh, wait, this is a kid's movie? Okay, remember, people, kids are stupid. Let's crank out some crap. And I say 60s and 70s and even the 80s because, yes, I have seen Mac and Me. What, you think I've never seen an episode of of Conan O'Brien before? With, uh, what's his name, Ant-Man? Paul Rudd. Oh, it says a lot that in order to remember Paul Rudd's name, I've got to say Ant-Man first. Wow. Yeah. It says a lot. Like, I don't need to go Thor, Chris Hemsworth. I don't need to do that, but apparently I need to do that for Ant-Man. That's fascinating. Now, this week, uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians too. another quickly churned out piece of crap. Uh, but that one at least has a rocking theme song. Yeah. Yes, you spell it S A N T A C L A U S Hooray for Santa Claus. Now, this movie, this week's movie is shit. But in order to fully get to the bottom of Santa Claus and the ice cream bunny, we need to talk about a specific movie genre. Bunny, you will never guess. In a million years, what movie genre we need to discuss? 
That's a good soup. Uh, Can you guess? I what? am going with uh, French New Wave. No. Really popular in the 70s, talking. man and woman, things like that. No, we will not be talking about French New Wave. Uh. We'll be talking about nudie cuties. Ka-chow! The Pope on film, kicking it up a notch. So, uh, nudie cuties. What are those? Well, let me uh, mail in tell you. Nudie Cuties were softcore nude movies from primarily the 50s and 60s that featured ample toplessness, but select bottomless, no bush, no dong, but a lot of cheek. And usually, some of the broadest humor to ever be written into a script. Humor so broad, it made Benny Hill look like Shakespeare. Yeah. Like, imagine Hee Haw, but Minnie Pearl and Roy Clark are naked and also <laughs> i'm sorry to put that into your head i sincerely apologize look at that new joke i mean they're all new jokes <laughs> speaking of benny hill you remember benny hin bunny yes the crazy white suited middle eastern min minister who would just heal people by touching them that was the funniest show on uh, and, the Trinity Broadcast Network. And knock people down with his jacket. Yeah. That that was some hilarious BS. Man, what happened to him? I loved that. He'd be just healing people. Oh, what happened to him? Is he dead? Probably not. Probably. He was a horrible person, so he's probably still alive. Meanwhile, Betty White... Yeah. So I've got a list here, a brand new list that I've never uh, made before. I've got a list of some of the classic nudie cuties that have been created. Now, did I make up some of the titles? Yes, but I didn't make up too many of them. So maybe get off my lady dick. Okay, damn y'all. Transphobic. Yeah. Uh, that was new. I mean, this is all new. So here are some titles of some classic nudie cuties. Nudes on the Moon. <laughs> the Ghoul Goes West. Yes. <laughs> uh, The Monster of Camp Sunshine. That's about a monster that attacks a nudist colony. I've seen that one. That one sucks. Nudes at the Abattoir. Okay. Law and Order, Naked Homicide Division. And Natasha the other day was like, uh, oh, what's the name of that woman that's been in Law and Order for like the past 300 years? What What's her name? And it's like, her name is Mariska Hargitay. And Natasha's like, how do you so easily know the name Mariska Hargitay? And it's like, because of the executioner. Yes. From that one movie was Mickey Hargitay. Yes. So I will never forget the name Mariska Hargitay. Ever. The daughter of somebody. She is actually the daughter. Uh, crazy. She was she she was the daughter of Queen Elizabeth. Oh. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth and uh, oh. Ernest P. Worrell. Uh, had a baby. Uh, you know who delivered the baby? Vincent Price. It's crazy. He was just always so uh, helpful. Yeah. Also, uh, the moment that Jeannie uh, asked me that question is when the edibles kicked in. Yay! So, that's fun. Huzzah! Uh, some more nude nudie cuties. Nudie University. Nakedsville, USA, Citizen Kane, Naked Welders, and of course, the classic trilogy, Nudie Popes Go Bananas, one, two, and three. Personally, oh, I thought wow. the third one, you know, you could miss that one, but everyone loves Nudie Popes Go Bananas, too. Okay, never mind. I made up a majority of the list, but you get the general idea yes. about yeah. 
what a nudie cutie it's a cheap movie shown in a badly lit grindhouse theater in the bad parts of New York City before P.F. Chang's and the M&M store came along and sanitized it all. Yes. And at this point, you may be wondering why we're having this conversation about nudie cuties when we're supposed to be talking about Santa Claus and the ice cream bunny, but don't worry. We'll get there! Okay? Yes. So just calm your your butt. I changed what I was going to say because suddenly Eleanor is here beeping that freaking dollar store cash register. You, you want to play with it? Fine. But don't make the beeping and the talking of the cash register. Okay. 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 Also, hey, hey, I love you. Okay. I noticed you didn't say I love you too. You are grounded until you are 27 years old, Eleanor. Now you have to get in a cop uniform and get in a squad car and announce yep. it. You've got to say it back. <laughs> yeah. Got to say it back. Four. One of the leading directors of Nudie Cuties was a guy named Barry Mahon. And I'm sure the H is silent, like Vince McMahon. But uh, I believe that all letters matter. Yeah. So sorry, Barry Mahon. You're Barry Mahon now. Sorry, woke leftists. <laughs> That's a joke because we are the leftists. We are the leftists, mister. Yes. That was a craft reference. Anywho, Barry Mahon was a veteran. He was in WWII. And according to Wikipedia, he was captured and he tried to escape and he was a hero. And they made a film about a little film about Barry Mahon maybe you've heard of it it's called The Great Freaking Escape and let that sink in the film The Great Escape was based on wait hold on a minute Barry Mahon was actually considered to be one of the true life stories that The Great Escape was based on and I believe he did milk that but no that film is now known to not be about him so please re disregard the last six years of us covering santa yes. claus and the ice cream bunny but that's okay because Oopsie. this is totally new never before said uh so barry mahon was in wwii he came back to the u.s and started cranking out cheap ass low budget schlock he would go on to make over 60 films in his lifetime. He started with nudie cuties because what's the one thing you put in it? You put it in a movie and it becomes a hit. Tits. And Barry Mahon directed such totally real cult films as Forbidden Flesh, Sex Club Intern, Nudes A Go Go, Swinging Nurses, The Love Cult, Nudes on Tiger Reef, the Beast That Killed Women, Bottoms Up, and my favorite title, the one with the most pizzazz, The Diary of Knockers McCalla. <laughs> and fun fact about the movie, The Diary of Knockers McCalla, the script was written by Nelson Mandela in prison. So... So was that uh, in direct competition, like kind of like a Marvel DC kind of thing with Chesty Morgan? I would imagine. I would imagine so. Yeah. Uh, man, that movie. Yes, we covered that, was a that great, movie. Great. That was a great episode of the podcast. But Barry Mahon didn't just focus on nudie cuties. No, the it veteran the was. It would make the uh, click in the flash. <laughs> yeah, she had a she had a camera in her boob, and she would go click, and yeah. she would kill people with her boobs. And then, oh no, there's a bomb in her boobs. Don't you get it? It's a booby trap. Yeah. The veteran was a prolific movie maker, so he didn't just make nudie cuties. He also released such stinkers as Pagan Island, Cuban Rebel Girls, and... Rocket Attack USA, which was also featured in a hilarious episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, season two. So it was a Joel episode. And we all know that Joel was the best. 
Joel and Mike were my Steve and Joe from Blue's Clues. Yes. Sure, Joe was around longer, but everyone knows that Steve's char- star doth shine the brightest. Yes. That is yes. entirely new, as is this entire take on Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. This is my favorite episode of the year because I love taking fresh new looks at this movie and not for any other meta reason that is too highly specific to be funny to others. Yes. Yay! Well, this is how the story goes. It's the late 60s in Dania, Florida, and they open a 100-acre theme park called Pirate's World. What? A big theme park in Florida? That will never work! But for a few years, Pirate's World was a pretty big freaking deal. It opened on April 8th, 1967, and it was primarily known at the time as the first major Florida theme park. But another thing that they were well known for is that they had a big outdoor auditorium. And the lineup of concerts that they had at Pirate's World was freaking insane. Yes. Led Zeppelin, The Grateful Dead, Black Sabbath, The Doors, David Bowie, Frank Zappa, Steely Dan, and Johnny Winter recorded a live album there. 1971's Live Johnny Winter and was recorded at both Fillmore East in New York City and friggin' Pirates World. <laughs> so for a small period in time, a very, very, very small period in time, Pirates World was the place to be. Hey, look at that. A theme park in Florida. Also a cool concert venue. Man, when people think of Florida and theme parks, they are always gonna think of Pirates World. Cut to the Disney Corporation. Ten minute warning. Okay. Uh, The Disney Corporation comes out and says, hey, we've gotten an amazing, wonderful, and altogether wholly original idea. We're opening a massive theme park in Florida. Never before done, we're the first. And by and large, the Disney people got all the credit for being the first theme park in Florida when it opened in 1971. Uh, Pirates World opened in 1967. It would uh, be forced to close in 1973, but they tried. The Pirates World people. They fought and struggled, and someone said, how can we get people into the parks? And the idea became, what if we made some cheapo kids movies here in the park? And they'll not only turn a profit, because we'll make these uh, kids movies for the cheap, but the movies will also act as de facto ads for our theme park. And as the stars aligned around that time, Barry Mahon's Nudie Cuties weren't making any money anymore. Uh, What other movie genre can I do that I can make on the cheap and will be guaranteed to make money? So yada, yada, yada. Uh, Barry Mahon is now cranking out uh, shitty kids movies. He makes a shitty Wizard of Oz movie for kids and he needs a place to film it. Pirate's World. I have never seen those before. I think they might be Mel. Uh... And a uh, fun uh, side story. Barry Mahon's like, hey, this isn't just a cheapo kids movie. This is a big deal. And we have someone to star in it. Maybe you've heard of her. Judy Garland. But of course, he never talked to Judy Garland. It was all bullshit. He was just, uh, he was just trying to drum up some publicity. So the guy's a real huckster. Uh, so... After the Oz movie, Barry Mahon made Jack and the Beanstalk, a kid's movie for Pirate's World. And then after that, he made Thumbelina, also at Pirate's World. And then he would record maybe 15 to 20 minutes of extra footage of Santa on a beach and just shove those two pre-existing movies into the new footage and say, hey, a new movie. Thus, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny were born. And they had two different releases. You either got Thumbelina inside of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, or you got Jack and the Beanstalk inside of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, And Bunny, this year we watched the Jack and the Beanstalk version uh, because it was shorter. (laughs) 
I I originally uh, said that we should watch the Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny that is for free on YouTube by Riff Tracks. Uh, they actually did both. Uh, they released a Riff Tracks version where they make fun of the Thumbelina, and then later they did a Riff Tracks live, and for that one they did the Jack of the Beanstalk version. So they did both, uh, and we were going to discuss it this week, but since Mike Nelson is a right-wing Christian conservative jackass, this podcast of ours is now Riff Track free. If you want something like Riff Tracks, I suggest either The Mads on YouTube. It's uh, the two main mad scientists, Dr. Clayton Forrester and TV's Frank, and they are just themselves making fun of movies. It's a lot like Riff Tracks, except they're cool liberals and sometimes cuts. So yeah. it's already it's already better than Riff Tracks. Also, they occasionally release some free shorts and free movies. They just released a live recording of them making fun of Glenn or Glenda on their YouTube channel. So you should check out the mats. Or if you don't want to do that, go back and watch Cinematic Titanic. Yes. That was fun. It was literally everyone who was at Rift Tracks getting together and doing a show. And it had this weird uh, design and plot. It, it and I did. Like it. it was it was a a little off putting how they were on different parts of the boat, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It was odd. It was odd, but I really liked it. That was great. Also, uh, check Pluto TV on demand. Uh, there's some cinematic Titanic on there too, if I'm not mistaken. Anywho, what do you think about this movie, Bunny? What do you think about Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny? I, I, I think it's horrible on a lot of levels, but, you know, it's Christmas time, and I really kind of want to focus on something else. The, I mean, I, I, I really can't call him a genius, but the snake oil salesman in this movie really deserves some kudos. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, he exemplifies... The idea, no small parts, only small yes. actors. He I feel the gave exact, everything I feel the, he could. I feel the exact same way about the evil witch in Troll 2. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, you, you have a small part in a horrible movie, but god damn it, you're going to try your hardest to make this shit work. Yes. Yes, so... Yeah. so if you have to watch this movie, just kind of try to concentrate on him. The overall movie looks like uh, a school play production. Yeah. Uh, but a very special kind of school play production where they would probably get a local celebrity of some sort. You yeah. know, like crazy bob from crazy bob's used car or a uh, news five meteorologist frank yeah. camacho yes or something like that yeah yes and then he would be all over the posters and everything like that so a yeah. school play kind of in that sense um one thing i will say now that i think about it okay so they did the wizard of oz there they did Jack and the Beanstalk, they did Thumbelina, and they did Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. I believe, I might be mistaken, but I think that there might be more films, movies filmed in Pirate's World than there have been in Disneyland. I think only two or three movies have been filmed inside of Disneyland, and one of those was That Thing You Do. I think we only got about two minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Anyway, that is it for our seventh annual entirely original uh, discussion of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. This is our last episode of the year. And Bunny, I just want to say I love doing this podcast with you and I love you. And thank you and Jeannie for all that you've done for me this year. I've been through the ringer. Yeah. And it's been fun. And I love you guys. And I love thank this you. podcast. Love you I, too. It, it's always nice to end it with 
do you think we made the right choice? Because we were gonna pick. Uh, it was it was either always do Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny every year, or always do the Star Wars Holiday Special. I think we picked the right one. I think we picked the right imagine, one. I can't imagine having to watch uh, Life Day every year. No. Yeah. But anyway, this is our last episode of the year. Our next episode will be January 8th. We'll be discussing the wonderful A24 film, uh, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, starring Waze, Whale, Whale, Jet, Jensky, Whale, Whale, Whale Jetski. Could that be his name? Whale Jetski? Wonderful film. But uh, that's our next episode. Now that I'm looking back, I don't know. Episode, Whale Jetski is a pretty cool fucking name. It is. Yeah. That should be you the think name about of that. it. Whale Jetski. Uh, now that I'm looking back at this episode, the highs, the lows, the ups, and the downs. Uh, Dead Puppies, Vince McMahon, DJ Cool Herc, Funky Four Plus One, Santa Claus, Bunnies with Ice Cream. I got uh, Barry Mahon, Nudie Cuties. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. Yep. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, I was worried. I was worried there. Yeah, but because uh, I, I felt that it was a damn good episode, but I didn't want to say that, didn't want to step on your toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am oh. I am am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Malin. And on behalf of Natasha and Mal and Max and Eleanor and uh, this cat, Whale Jetski, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. You douche waffles and poopy tent. And you ice cream bunnies and the kit. Do 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 do. Meow, 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 meow,